this involved in this. All right, here we go. Follow it along. While my tapes are rewinding, we can take a look at these opening lines, take a look at how this unfolds. You got nasty weather outside, like really nasty weather, lightning, thunderstorm, all that kind of stuff. Notice, as you begin to have this conversation, the question will be, what does it all mean, the bad weather? You're going to have two different views. One, bad omens. We should, pu we should pull the plug on this plan right away. Cassius, however, will say, whoa, 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 way wrong way to read the omens. In fact, really good idea, really good idea to kill Caesar. He's going to get what he deserves, if you will. Yeah, everyone, including the last one I sent to you as well. Oh, wow. Okay, I'll do one more then. Yeah, has she not been? Definitely. Definitely. Thanks for the... Uh... All right, let's, uh, let's go back to it. Notice uh, Cassius will say to, uh, to Casca at line, uh, at line 84, stop being a woman. What does that mean? Your fears are womanish. But why would he say that? What is the bias here? What bias, what game are we playing here? Guys are brave. Oh, Winter's just went like this. Oh. Right? At the very end of this, notice one more time, line 141. Brutus again will be referenced as very noble. They got to get Brutus on their side to be able to make sure they legitimate their evil plans. All right, here we go. Go ahead and follow this short scene, and then we'll be finished with Act 1. Like a thing unfurled? Well, sister, I had seen tempests, with scolding winds that drive the naughty oaks, and I'd seen the ambitious ocean swell and rage and foam to be exalted with the threatening clouds. But never till tonight, never till now, did I get through a tempest dropping fire. Either there is a civil strife in heaven, or else the world too saucy with the gods in senses them to send destruction. I saw you anything more wonderful? The common saying, you know it well by sight. Held up his left hand, which did flame and burn like twenty torches joined, and yet his hand, not sensible of fire, remained unscorched. Besides, I had not sensible enough my sword. Against the capital I met a lion, who glazed upon me and went surly by without annoying me. And they were drawn upon a heap, a hundred ghastly women, transformed with their fear, who swore they saw men all in fire walk up and down the streets. And yes, the bird of night did sit even at noonday upon the market place, hooting and shrieking. When these prodigies do so conjointly meet, let not men say these are their reasons, they are natural. But I believe they are portentous things under the climate that they point to. Indeed, it is a strange disposed time. But men may construe things after their fashion, clean from the purpose of the things themselves. Come Caesar to the capital tomorrow? He does. For he did bid Antonius send word to you, he would be there tomorrow. Good night then, Casper. This is the third not to war. Farewell, Cicero. Pleasing night to honest men. Whoever well, knew the heavens menace, sir? Those that have known the earth so full of force. My heart, I have walked about the streets, submitting me unto the perilous night, and thus unbracing Casca, as you see, have bared my bosom to the thunderstone. And 
when the trust blue lightning seemed to open the breast of heaven, I did present myself, even in the aim and very flash of it. So wherefore did you so much attempt that of these? It is the part of men to fear and tremble when the most mighty gods by token send such dreadful heralds to astonish us. You are dull, Casca, and those sparks of light that should be in a Roman you do want, or else you use not. You look pale and gaze and put on fear and cast yourself in wonder to see the strange impatience of the heavens. But if you'd consider the true cause, why all these fires? Why all these gliding ghosts? Why birds and beasts from quality and kind? Why old men, fools, and children calculate? Why all these things change from their ordinance, their natures, and preformed faculties to monstrous quality? Why, you shall find that heaven hath infused them with these spirits to make them instruments of fear and warning unto some monstrous state. I, Casca, name to thee a man most like this dreadful night that thunders, lightens, opens, raves, and roars at the Orion in the Capitol. A man no mightier than myself or me in personal action, yet prodigious grown and fearful as these strange eruptions are. It is Caesar that you mean. I need both. It is. For Romans now have thews and limbs like to their ancestors, but all the while our father's minds are dead and we are governed with our mother's spirits. Father, you can suffer and show us womanish. Indeed, they say the senators tomorrow mean to establish Caesar as a king, and he shall wear his crown by sea and land in every place save here in Italy. Cassius from bondage will deliver Cassius. There in ye gods you make the weak most strong. There in ye gods you tyrants to defeat. Nor stony tower, nor walls of beaten brass, nor airless dungeon, nor strong links of iron can be retentive to the strength of spirit. But life being weary of these worldly bars never lacks power to dismiss itself. If I know this, know all the world besides, that part of tyranny that I do bear, I can shake off at pleasure. So can I. So every bondman in his own hand bears the power to cancel his captivity. But why should Caesar be a tyrant then? Poor man, I know he would not be a wolf, but that he sees the Romans are but sheep. And there it is, he right? No That's his view. Romans hinds, those that with haste will make a mighty fire, begin it with weak straw. What trash is Rome! What rubbish and what awful! But it serves for the base matter to illuminate so vile a thing as Caesar! Where has thou led me? I perhaps beat this before a willing bondman. Then I know my answer must be made. But I'm armed, and dangers are to me in difficulty. Well, you speak to Cassie, but to such a man that is no fearing telltale. Hold. I'm not a wimp. I'm not going to. I'm not going to uh, narc on you. In other words, address all these griefs, and I will set this but a mind as far as Hooker's heart is. Yes, I find you made. Now, know you, Casper. I have moved already some certain of the noblest-minded Romans to undergo with me an enterprise of honourable, dangerous consequence, and I do know by this they stay for me in Pompey's porch. Now, this fearful night, there is no stir of walking in the streets, and the complexion of the element in favors, like the work we have in hand, most bloody, fiery, and most terrible. Step closer. Here comes one in haste. To Sinner. I don't know him by his gate. He is a friend. Sinner, where haste you so? I don't you. Tell us, Sinner. No, it is Casca, one in corporate, one of Kemp's. Am I not stayed for, Sinner? I'm glad not. What a fearful night is this. Two or three of us have seen strange sights. Am I not stayed for? Tell me. Yes, you are. Cassius, if you could but bring the noble Brutus to our party. Notice again, day. noble, right? Sinner, take this paper, and look you, lay it in the praetor's chair where Brutus may but find it, and throw this in at his window, set this up with wax upon old Brutus' statue. All this done, repair to Pompey's porch, where you shall find us. Is Decius Brutus and Trebonius there? All but the Tellus, He's gone to seek you at your house. And I will hire him, so bestow these papers as you may. That done, repair to Pompey's theatre. Come, Casca. You and I will yet ere dare see Brutus at his house. Watch what they say about Brutus. Man entire on the next encounter yields him up. Brutus Okay, thanks guys. Uh, bring your uh, writing uh, uh, assessment packet with you tomorrow, okay? For 12.